We, we are, are the, the Wild, Wild Earthlings. Earthlings. And we wanted to share with you how we installed our 24 volt AC unit by Cruise and Comfort. So we're about to buy an AC unit for the van. Could be our worst purchase ever. Only time will tell, really. So, are we making a mistake? You would say, you're definitely not making a mistake here. Say what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that, that's 100% leak. Whoa, 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 hold on! Oh, it worked. Yeah. I guess we'll see you when it shows up. I could feel the money like leaving my wallet. You're so cute. <laughs> That's gonna get everywhere. <laughs> Why is it so much heavier in this box than it is in the big box? First, we need to figure out where our AC unit is going to go. It's important to keep the condenser and the unit in close proximity because the refrigerant lines are only a couple feet long. So for us, we decided to place the unit right next to our driver's side wheel and the condenser will go where the factory spare tire would be. There are condensation lines that need to drain to the outside of the van from the unit. Also for optimal cooling, it's important to keep the unit as low to the ground as possible for the return air. We will be adding a raised floor to our van. So the return air sits right above the floor. That's why we decided to put the unit where it is. To fasten the unit down, first we need to pre-drill our holes and then we will use bolts, washers, and nuts to fasten the unit to the shelf we built. After we installed the unit, we noticed that it rattled quite a bit. So we took the whole thing apart and added sound deadening to the metal case as well as rubber pads underneath the unit. Since then, our unit has had minimal rattle. Now we need to mount the condenser underneath the van. The condenser has to sit at a 15 degree angle, so we need to make mounting brackets. The aluminum bracket that we made will be drilled into the metal channels running horizontally under the van and attached to the metal holes that run along the side of the condenser. So we came up with a design that will look something like this. It will give us the ability to screw into our metal channels as well as give us the 15% angle. We used a vise to bend the aluminum to the angles that we needed. Also, since one side has the hose connections, we needed to add a bump out around in the bracket in order to tighten the hoses. This was the bracket design we came up with, and after our 27 test fits, it was time to mount the bracket to the condenser. We used a drill, measuring tape, drill bits, clamps, the mounting brackets, number 10 bolts, nuts, washers, self-tapping screws, washers, and the condenser. We measured out where the holes were. Like we said before, we are attaching our mounting bracket to the holes that run alongside the condenser. After marking the holes, we used a center punch to make dents in the aluminum so that we could use the drill bit to make our holes. We clamped the bracket to the condenser and then used the number 10 bolts, washers, and nuts to connect everything together. Okay, now we got it all together. We're gonna go up in there and test fit this and make sure it's good and then we'll mark our holes and drill it in and put it up. We use the center punch again to cut out bigger holes for our self-drilled screws to go into. And now it's time to mount this thing.
The hard part is done. Now it's time to attach all our hoses. With a lot of planning and measuring, we decided to drill the holes for the hoses where the rear axle is on the driver's side. This was very dependent on where we mounted everything inside the van. The hose was given were the perfect length to reach the condenser from the unit. We used conduit to protect the hose from the metal of the van, and we used glue and silicone to keep it in place as well as keep the outside elements out. We tied and used mounting clips to keep the hoses in place and use a wrench to tighten all the connections. Also, there are two condensation drain lines on the unit, one on the front and one on the back. We ran the hoses together to meet at a T, and then from there ran out the bottom of the van to drain properly. Okay, just a note to add, we're doing our um, AC unit install and we're reading the manual. Um, but to ease the confusion, the fans we have, as of right now, as of 2021, we have to follow the 48 volt fan conversion. So we have two 12 volt fans and you have to wire these fans in series. No other choice. And now we need to set up all the electrical components. The instructions made this super easy to follow except for the minor confusion we had before. Once you have the condenser fan wired in series, you will then need to connect the controller cable, which is the white supplied wire. Then you will need to run a positive and negative wire to your power source. going to run our power wires that are going to our batteries and we're also going to run this wire that's going from our fans to our condenser so we're going to run that right now and we'll show you how we did it oh my god Okay. Since we run a 24 volt system, we can connect the wire straight to our bus bar to our 24 volt batteries. We added a 70 amp breaker for extra protection. The instructions didn't include what size breaker to add for the 24 volt system, so we just matched the 12 volt system. We also ran our thermometer wire a while back before our walls went up. However, I guess what we would change is we wouldn't put it on the wall. We would put it somewhere else. Where would we put it? The cabinet or something? I think it's fine. I don't even gotta say that because <laughs> then they're gonna be like... Why should we trust you? Yeah, wait, why, why are we gonna watch the guy? You don't even want to replace the control unit. <laughs> With the working unit, it's time to charge the system. Disclaimer. Can we put a disclaimer here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am. Disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. We're not telling you to go and try to charge a system on your own. If you don't have the confidence or the tools or the know-how, just go to someone, find mm -hmm. someone in your local area. We couldn't find anyone. We in our could local not area. find anyone in our local area. We actually originally I uh, we called and I had somebody come out and take a mm -hmm. look, and I basically told them it's a. It's an off-grid DC mini split system and they said okay and they came out and took a look and they were like oh this is not a mini split and I was like yeah it is a mini split <laughs> the condensers split from the the con uh, compressor unit uh, you probably will run into the same problem if you don't have if you don't live in a major city and have a bunch of air conditioning companies to choose from 
So this may be an option that you decide to take, but just for in informational purposes, yeah. anything that we say in this video, we're not telling you to do, to mm -hmm. go out and try yourself. It's more just how we did it yeah. and um, in our experience. Mm -hmm. We yeah. followed Chris Vick's video and he did an amazing job, super informative and better than what we could describe right now. The tutorial video that he has is also mainly for air conditioning uh, units in cars which work very similarly to the unit that you know cruising comfort puts out you just have to take a few precautions but overall the video itself for how to charge the system is straightforward yeah. what to do it's freezing and we got ac can they feel can you feel the hair can you feel it Crabs. <laughs> Can you feel it now, Mr. Krabs? A few months went by and we noticed our unit wasn't blowing as cold as we first charged it. We suspected there was a leak, so we tightened our hose connections until they simply would not budge anymore. We recharged our system and a few months later we had the same problem. Okay, so we did face a few issues with the unit itself. So first, there was the leak. And then just the constant rattling and it was so loud. Even when our benches were closed, it was ridiculously loud. And then Dylan later found out that our thermistor was bad. Went bad. Went bad. It was a really slow leak and it would take a couple of days to a couple of weeks for the leak to completely surface and for the AC to stop being cool. Um, and so because of that, it was really difficult to troubleshoot quickly. We were working with the, the owner of Cruise and Comfort who was helping us try to diagnose the issue. I think we tightened down the refrigerant lines a million times. So we bought the halogen sensor, used the halogen sensor, tested it, and we were able to find where the leak was on top of confirming that we, um, to really narrow down where the leak was, we used uh, soapy water. which you know, You'll see uh, what that looks like. Look at that, that's a 100% leak. Then the other problem we had was the constant rattling. So a lot of that was just because the unit mounted to some wood, which was directly mounted to the van uh, and the rest of the the bench and everything that we have. I just think that most of the noise and rattling was obviously due to vibration and the rubber pads did a really good job at um, sort of deadening that, that vibration. So a couple of months uh, or maybe even weeks after we finally got all of the issues resolved uh, for the unit, we actually ended up having another issue which was the thermistor. So um, it's this little guy here. It's kind of blurry but uh, and it's just a, a small circuit board uh, that is essentially a glorified temperature sensor. It lets the compressor know that it can slow down or speed up based on the temperature of the coils. This actually broke, it took us a while to diagnose that, and then once we fixed it, uh, the issue that we had with the thermistor went away. And that, you know, that issue was kind of severe because it led to the hermetic compressor locking itself up uh, to protect itself from damage. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the compressor would just run, 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 run at max because the thermistor wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other cool little uh, workarounds you can do uh, for the thermistor breaking and stuff like that. Maybe we'll make some other video on that and that could be pretty cool. But I think that most people are not going to have this problem. It's a very small subset of people that probably have this uh, AC unit and even a smaller subset of people who have this problem. And you, where did you get this from? This piece? Yeah. This piece I got straight from the owner of Cruising Comfort. Uh, he's was really helpful, um, helped us solve all the problems that we had with the unit. Um, and there were multiple. <laughs> there was multiple. Yeah. When we did have any issues with our unit or we had any questions about our unit, any concerns, um, our customer service that we got was phenomenal. Um, we ended up fixing all of our issues. We didn't have to take it to Cruising Comfort to have them fix it. Um, that also might be on us for being handy, um, but the issues all were minimal and with their help, we were, in, we were able to fix it. Once we got like our lower cabinets in, 
and we had an idea for our upper cabinets, we started actually running our ductwork and we had to put this at the very top of our van. We added two blowers so one can go towards the back of our van and one could go maybe towards the side where we're cooking. We don't see that there's any issues, there's no resistance or anything. It's not putting any stress on our unit itself. So what we decided to do was we ran it behind our cabinets and then up through a channel and then out our upper cabinet. So on a hot day where it's around 90 plus degrees, our van is essentially blowing hot air with the fans that we have. To fix this issue, we bought the AC unit. Well then, I guess I'll go ahead and turn this fancy dancy AC unit on. And we can comfortably be in the back of the van at a cool 75 to 78 degrees. It feels really cool back there. I can maybe take a nap. One weekend, we decided to head to the coast. And these are videos from the morning of. But later in the day, when it got above 90 degrees, we had the AC running for about six hours and it only drained our battery about 40%. We do have a pretty big battery bank, but this is nothing compared to a 120 volt AC unit, right? Yeah, you can't really run that very long. No. Um, even, even, on, even on our size batteries. We have a 400 amp hour, 24 volt battery pack. So the 400 amp hours, I think on, I think on max, the AC unit draws like maybe 38 amps. So, I mean, you could do the math there. Half of our battery could be drained in six hours if we're running it on, you know, max. Okay, so this is what the AC unit sounds like when it's on with the blower on high and then the unit itself on loud. And our benches are closed. We don't have a door on this cabinet, but it's not that bad. With all of our issues, with how much it is, would we recommend this? Yeah, I mean, there's not really many alternatives out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you're the type of person that is planning on, you know, going anywhere, anytime, um, especially if you're gonna be in like, you know, temperatures can easily get into the hundreds. Um, you know, in, in other places south of this, they're, they stay in the hundreds. So unless you have a plan for how to deal with that, this is probably a really good option for people. Um, I think that, you know, the AC rooftop mounts, uh, rooftop mount AC units are great. Um, they're just not really viable for a lot of people because you can't run them unless you're plugged in. Um, which again, if you're not boondocking most of the time and you're at campsites and stuff like that, it's not a problem. Yeah, and especially if you have dogs or any other animal, um, we mostly oh, yeah. bought this for them. Yeah. Because we wanted to be able to go for a hike and have the dogs be comfortable in the van and not have heat stroke yeah a pretty good point because i think one of the next things we might do is add a uh, temperature sensor to our servo and then have mm -hmm. that uh, be able to like alert us if the heat in the van is too high and we definitely like not to like brag about like how much money we have like we definitely saved up oh yeah for this unit we oh yeah we knew that this was an important part for our build so we put aside money and it yeah. took us multiple years months yeah. to buy this unit it was more, we definitely planned and said, hey, we need to set aside money to pay for this. Mm -hmm. And we did. Well, stick around for the rest of uh, the chaos. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. That's what you want to call it. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment and consider subscribing. We'll see you next time. These are long thoughts come easily Stretching my field of view What's hard is when they mean nothing Something I already